Hello and welcome back, Sleepy What's It here and I have another miniatures video for you. In today's video I'm going to be showing you a number of quick and easy recipes for doing light green skin on things like goblins, grots, and snotlings. Here we can see the variety of skin tones that I ended up with on my snotling blood bowl team. There are kind of two tonal groups here, a more blue-green group and a more yellow-green one, with a lighter and darker variant of each, giving us effectively four different styles. I wanted to have some variety in my snotlings, since there's about 24 of them on the team when you include the ones on the pump wagons, and I just really didn't want to be doing carbon copies of the exact same thing throughout the entire team. I also didn't really want to be laboring over each of these models for forever, so I was very explicitly targeting something in the range of a tabletop to tabletop plus quality, eschewing trying to make display pieces here, like just get these guys done. For my paint jobs, I used contrast paints as the basis to speed things up, doing the base and shade layers at once. But I will also explain how I would have done these using a more traditional paint style with like a base layer and then a shading layer. For all these models, I prime them out using white-gray primer from Vallejo, and then base them out using Wraithbone from Citadel, both of these applied with my airbrush. I chose to base using Wraithbone since I was going to be using a contrast paint, so I needed a light-colored undercoat, but I wanted to have a warm tone, so this is why I didn't use something like Gracier. If you're doing more of a classic style paint job, so not using contrast paints, I would just prime your model however you normally would be, either a flat black, a flat gray, zenithal, basically whatever suits your style more. Once the prime and basing undercoat have dried, we can go and start applying paint to it. For the more blue-green models, I used Orc Flesh Contrast Paint cut one-to-one -one with Contrast Medium. We want to cut this because it's a relatively heavy pigmented paint, and at full strength it tends to give a very uniform dark green color. We need to thin it out a bit to get, have a bit more control over it so that we can establish light and dark areas a little bit better. If you're painting using a more a traditional or classic GW style of painting, I would base these out using Warboss Green and then shading uh, with Beal Tan uh, Green. For doing darker green skin tones like you would have on an orc or something like that, I would actually use something like Waff Flesh as the base layer, but because we're wanting lighter greens, we're going to step up a shade and start using Warboss Green as our uh, base layer. For the yellow uh, green uh, toned models, the contrast paint that I used was Militarum Green, again cut with medium so I can have a little bit more control over it. This paint uses GW's, it looks like a white uh, pigment in it or something, but it separates out noticeably, so you're going to have to agitate this a little bit more to get it all mixed together. Just make sure that you mix it um, fully, because if you have like it separated, it doesn't behave nicely. For classic paint style, I would base these out using snarstic green, and then shading using something like a Athen Athenian camo shade. If you've done the first layer using contrast paints, you'll want to let the models cure a bit uh, before you start doing any additional painting since we're going to be doing some dry brushing. Otherwise, you're going to pull up paint while you dry brush. I normally leave my contrast painted areas to sit overnight uh, to cure. This is one of the major drawbacks, I think, in contrast paints is the fact that it is far more prone to being pulled up uh, even after it's been fully cured. Um, one solution to this is to apply like a, a varnish all over your contrast paints, but that yeah, that's kind of a pain also. I tend to only use contrast paints when I'm doing batch painting, so I can do like a whole bunch of models, like do the green on all the models one evening, which is like a good painting session, leave them overnight, and the next day come and start uh, building on top of that. With the classic uh, base and shade style, you're still going to have to let the paint dry after you do your shading, but it's probably going to be a you can come back. If you're doing like all the snotlings on this team, by the time you've done all of the shaded all of them, you probably can come back to the first one and start working with that when it's dried enough. So once our base layer is dried, we're going to do two highlighting passes, which is we're, gonna, we're, we're really going to differentiate between like the light and the dark on our models. For the blue-green models, the dark-toned version, we're first highlighted using Warboss Green as a broad uh, dry brush to just generally brighten up all of the raised areas, trying to avoid getting too much into the recesses and details, but to kind of just making all of the raised areas that same shade of green. 
And then I then did a second layer of highlighting, which is a much more directed detailing orientated highlighting. Again, mostly dry brushing, but like down angle and such so that you can establish where the light's coming from. But this time with Skarsnick, Skarsnick, Skarsnick Green uh, to make the fine details pop uh, on him. For the light uh, toned uh, blue green models, the first uh, highlight was uh, done as a broad highlight using uh, Skarsnick Green, and then I did the detail highlighting using Ogre and Camo. Between these two paint jobs, there's an overlap at Skarsnick Green, which I kind of wish I hadn't done because I'm having such a difficult time pronouncing that word. Anyway, but it's the darker uh, highlight for our light skin tone and the brighter highlight for our dark skin tone. This overlap helps unify the models together since we're working kind of on the same spectrum of green. Like we're not like uh, making wildly differing. So you can see how they're some of them are lighter versions and darker, but they all kind of unify together. When we do the yellow green models in a moment, you're going to see again some reuse and extension of this palette so that all four uh, skin tones kind of merge, like they look somewhat unified. For the yellow green models, uh, the darker tone version, again, we're going to be doing two highlights, starting out with Skarsnick Green as our broad uh, dry brush, and then doing a second directed highlight using Ogre and Camo, which is actually the same pair that we used for the light version of our blue green models. So the blue green models are a little bit darker overall than the yellow green models. For the lighter version of a yellow green skin tone, the two highlight colors I used were Ogre and Camo and Yubshanti Bone in the same style as we've been doing with the previous ones. This is, overall, this is, I think, sufficient if you were just trying to bang out models, get like you have like 50 grots or something that you just need to get out. If you do this style of paint job, especially in like large hordes, you're not going to really notice any problems it's going to look good you're going to have some contrast they're going to be green they're going to do what you need to do but if we want to take this up a notch and do a little bit of detail painting we can bring a bit of life to these models with not a lot of effort we're going to be doing this using a thinned version of caribou crimson i thinned it using a one-to-one -one ratio with lime and medium the and what we're going to do with this is we're going to touch areas like the inside of the ears along the nose the lips of the miniature basically where you would have more blood vessels and such closer to the surface of the skin this red tone is going uh, to warm it up a little bit and just kind of give it an alive look and especially in like the more shadowed more green regions the red on green is actually going to desaturate the color a little bit and deepen the shadows so with all of those greens done, it's just basically now go and finish the model however you want uh, to do the rest of it to finish things off. But we have our base skin tones, and it's a very good canvas to work from. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, please give it a like. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. If you're really gung-ho about supporting the work I do, uh, feel free to go over to Coffee and uh, send uh, some money my way. I guarantee I'll use it for something useless. Other than that, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.